So, Julia, equity markets rallied in the second half of last year. I wonder if people celebrated by drinking beer. We've had numbers out today from Heineken. What are they telling us? Well, I mean, overall, looking at their results for last year, they're pretty good. Um, so, um, organic beer volume growth was up almost 3%, and then earnings growth was up, well, earnings per share was up about 9%. Um, Western Europe for the company still remains the drag, basically. So everywhere, all their markets um, saw a boost to volumes and, and earnings, um, except in Europe where they fell. So that still remains a problem for the company. But the, the big news, I guess, for Heineken last year was the, the acquisition of Asia Pacific breweries after plenty of toing and froing there. That, that should increase their exposure, I guess, to emerging markets. How has that changed the picture? Well, it does. Um, but remember that they still owned um, a, a big stake in it, so about 40% stake in it before they completed this acquisition. So now they're fully consolidating um, Asia Pacific breweries results. Um, so actually overall, all that does is reduce um, Western Europe in its portfolio from about 35% to 30%. So it certainly, and that's on an, on an earnings basis. So it certainly improves their, their mix, um, but, it, but it's not a huge, huge difference. Well, the, the, the lack of emerging markets exposure, I guess, is one of the reasons why Heineken shares have traditionally traded at something of a discount to its uh, other rivals, SAB Miller and, and AB InBev in particular. Do you think this acquisition and the, the earnings growth that it provides will, will help to close that valuation gap? Um, it certainly helps. I mean, it's not so much the lack of emerging markets acquisition. They do have a presence, obviously, in Africa um, and Latin America as well. It's just this big um, dominance of Western Europe which SAB Miller and AB InBev just don't have that um, sort of clunky European um, mix within their, their portfolio. So it's more, it's more that. Um, in terms of it closing the gap, it does a little bit. So as I say, it reduces the dependence on Western Europe. But then remember that Heineken, compared to peers, has quite a low return on invested capital. Um, and if you look at that from an acquisi acquisition um, basis, um, you saw they paid a lot for APB last year, is a drag on that. So that means historically they've always had a discount to their peers and that really should remain, I think, for now. One of the, the issues at the time of the acquisition was that they didn't really say very much about cost savings to, to, to be wrought from Asia Pacific breweries. Have they given us any more detail on that today? Um, well, originally they had this cost saving plan in, in process of 500 million euros. Um, and now they're saying that they can eke out another um, 25 million euro cost savings from APB. So there is some cost savings, but these are really um, quite insignificant. Um, but certainly there are some there. Well, Julie, the, the picture of Heineken certainly seems to be changing, moving more towards uh, sort of emerging markets focus, which with the difficulties in Western Europe, I, I guess, helps them very much. Uh, we'll, we'll wait to see what they have to say in six months' time. Thank you very much.